Today, we're gonna make a portrait. We're not gonna paint it, we're not gonna draw it, we're gonna make it out of strings and pins. Now this is one of my friends Dalmatian, and we're gonna try and make it together. This is what you'll need. So some black string, some glue, a packet of pins, scissors, pencil, some foam core. Now this is basically cardboard with foam in the middle, and then an image of what you wanna make. So I've got a dog, but you can do anything. Let's get started. I've got two pieces of foam core here. I'm gonna put some glue on either side and stick them together. It's gonna to give me a thicker base for the pins to go through. Squish them together. Move it around a little bit so it spreads the glue and even up those edges. Now I'm gonna get the image. I'm gonna line it up on the piece of paper and just gonna put a pin in each corner. I'm gonna grab my pencil and we're gonna trace around the image and then all the important parts like the eyes and the nose and the mouth. So as we do this, the pencil is pushing through the paper and it's gonna leave an indent in the foam core. And then we're gonna put the pins into that and it's gonna give us something to trace around. So just keep going right around. You just wanna go around and do the eyes. Now we're ready to pull out the pins and see what we've traced. And be careful with the pins because they're sharp, remember? Okay, and now the outline of my image is there, it's time to stick the pins in. So carefully getting the pins out and following those outlines that we made, those indents, just gonna put a pin in, say every two to three centimetres until it just goes through that second layer. And that's gonna give us a bit of strength when we pull the string tight. Keep going round until you've done the whole outline of the dog. Now I've done the outline of the dog, I'm gonna go around the border of the foam core and that's gonna let me fill in the background with string. Okay, the last couple of pins have all gone in. It's time to start with the string. Okay, to start, we're gonna make a knot over and under and that's where we're gonna start. And then all we do is we just loop it. Now there's no right or wrong when you're doing the background, whatever pattern you like. Definitely coming along. I just got to fill in a few more parts of the dog's face and the nose, and then it'll be ready to hang. Just cut off that last piece of string, and now your portrait of pins and string is ready to hang. You can create art anywhere. All you'll need is black, white, clear nail polish and toothpick. Start by applying a coat of white nail polish. Add random spots by using the toothpick and black nail polish and finish off with a top coat of clear nail polish. Ta-da! Jingy Walla, Jilgan Widjibul. My name's Rhoda Roberts. I'm a Bundjalung woman from northern New South Wales, and I work as head of Indigenous programming at the Sydney Opera House. You're looking at Vivid live with the sows on the Sydney Opera House. With the Songlines project, we looked at six artists from across the country. It's really hard trying to select just six artists out of the thousands of artists across Australia. But one of the reasons we selected them was because they all work in a different way, but they work with new technology.
And we were able to take those snakes and the goannas and the turtles and animate them so they moved across the opera house. For Aboriginal people to have their artwork seen by the world is just incredible. Everyone has a story to tell and everyone can paint. Don't be frightened to jump into something because when we have creative people, we have stories that will continue forever. This next project is going to be in the style of pop art, which kind of sounds like an artwork entirely made of popcorn. And whilst that does sound delicious, this artwork is going to have a much longer shelf life. And today I'm looking at nature for my design. Pop art refers to a popular style of modern art that often uses bright colours and repeated images. What you're going to need is a canvas, a paintbrush, some paint, a drop sheet, spray paint, mask, and some found objects. I'm going to use some branches that I found at my local park. Now the first step is to paint your canvas in a bright block colour. Now you're going to have to paint your whole canvas, including the edges. With pop art, the brighter the colour, the better. And often contrasting colours look really good together. I'm using primary and secondary colours. So what I mean about contrasting colours is they're actually opposite each other on the colour wheel. So red and green, blue and orange, yellow and purple. Now you want your background to be a solid block colour, so do two coats of paint. Now set this aside to dry and the next step is to spray paint your leaves onto your canvas. But I'm going to move inside because you want no wind for that step. Okay, my canvas is nice and dry. Now just place your leaves onto your canvas in a nice big pattern. Also, make sure you do this in a really well ventilated area. Now I'm using gum leaves because they have a nice strong solid shape and they sit flat on the canvas which will give you a much better result at the end. But you can use whatever you find, whether it's flowers or sticks, just make sure it sits nice and flat on the canvas. Okay, I'm happy with that pattern. Now when you're spray painting, use a nice sweeping motion that will give you good even coverage and spray right up to the ends. And don't forget to have an adult present and to wear your safety mask. Sometimes your objects might move around a little, but don't worry, it will make your pattern all the more interesting. Now if you spray too much, the paint is going to drip off the leaves and onto your artwork. So you short, sharp bursts. Now leave it for 10 minutes before you take your leaves off. If you move your leaves while the paint is wet, you'll risk scratching your design. Now I'm going to make a series of four, so I'm going to repeat this process, but with different colours. I'm here in the Blue Mountains looking out at the amazing Three Sisters. Drawing landscapes can be really daunting, but some of the best artists are not scared of making mistakes. That's what my art teacher used to tell me. I'm going to show you a really great technique to make drawing landscapes more fun and less scary. All you need is some coloured pens or pencils and some paper. What I'm going to do is put my pen on my page, look out at the landscape, and I'm literally going to draw what I see. But don't look down at your page.
I'm starting with the three sisters on the left and all the way down to the bottom of the valley and not taking our pen off the page. Cool. Okay, so I'm going to look at my page now. It's not too bad. I was concentrating really hard. I don't think I'd get these nice free flowing lines as well as what I've done without looking. Now what I'm going to do, still with the same colour, is I might go in and sort of shade around where there's shadows or the darker parts where the trees are or those big cracks in the rocks. You can look at your page for this bit too. I'm just going to go and not worry if I make a mistake. Mark in where there's some trees and some bush and there's these beautiful cracks that run along the Three Sisters. So I'm just kind of really roughly marking them in. I really love drawing with this technique because it creates a really cool abstract kind of artwork. I'm just holding my pen really, really loosely and just trying to have fun as I draw. Scribbling in those trees. This sort of helps to give your drawing a little bit of depth if you have things in the foreground and then things working their way back. I can see that there's just a little peak here, so I'll just add that in. And there's kind of one going across here too. So lots of artists use this kind of technique to map out their initial idea for something. If you don't have very much time at a place, you can really quickly draw this to map out your basic shape. And then you might go home later and redraw it in a much more detailed way. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with where I've shaded in my darker bits with my blue. So I'm going to swap over to my orange because when I look out at the landscape, I can see these really beautiful patches of lighter colors and orange. So I'm just going to sort of use this to indicate where those are. These big squares of orange. And I'm trying to follow the line of the rocks. So they're going horizontally, all those really nice cracks and I'll just go a little bit outside those squares. So there we have it, a lot of scribbles and abstract lines, but I'm pretty happy with it. Another really great way to use this technique could be on a huge piece of paper with some paint. What is art? Art is expressing your feelings onto something visual. Art's just like the colour of life, you know, brings life into life. Art is like expressing your emotions through like creativity, I guess. Yeah. Um, I think art is an expression of yourself. Yeah, I think it's a really great way to sort of show your opinions on the world and people in it. I feel like it's kind of expressed through everything. Like, it's a really conceptual sort of thing, like even in like uh, nature, art. Yeah, kind it's of so different through. to every person. It's what you're passionate about and it's always lots of fun. I think art can be in a lot of things, like photography, um, dancing, music. You can make like a statue out of cat clay. Oh, it's performance, it's nature, it's music. I think it's pretty broad. Um, I feel like it could even be buildings, like that's pretty arty too. It could be a, a painting on a wall, a drawing, um, your breakfast in a bowl after you've finished eating it. You know, sometimes you might look into it and go, oh, it kind of looks like the... Australia.
Hi, I'm Alex. I'm from Snarkitecture, and we made this installation at Sydney Festival. This is the beach. Our practice is called Snarkitecture, and it was founded by myself, an architect and an artist. And it's an interesting space to be in between those disciplines. I'd say that the beach really is very close to an art project. It's like a public art experience. Um, it's also a very shared experience, a collective experience. I think one of our goals is to create spaces that are memorable, to create experiences that you take away with you and that you want to share with people. For us, space is everything. We're thinking about it both structurally and experientially. What happens and what do you feel when you not just are in the space, but what happens when you walk up to it and what happens when you enter it and what happens, what's the first thing you see, what's the first thing you touch? Um, how do all of those things inform your overall experience of being somewhere and remembering it? And it's also the scale here is what's part of the important thing for us, is to be able to have a room that's enormous and to be able to create this very large scale installation. Because when we think about the real beach, um, the ocean is endless. And so we're playing with um, infinity, like the idea that the, the mirrors here create an uh, illusion that the beach might extend forever. So my first memory of art, I think, was probably at MoMA in New York. And I can remember seeing a Jeff Koons sculpture there, um, which is a stack, of, uh, a stack of vacuums. And the reason I remember this uh, experience so clearly, I think, is it was the same vacuum that we had in our house. But I remember being very struck by the idea that something that was in our house that we saw and used every day, in that context, could be turned into art. And to a certain extent, you know, Snark Architecture is doing that as well, taking things that we know from the everyday world and making them into something new. As you can see behind us, we like to use balls a lot. They're things that remind us of play and sport and games. And I think what's important about this project and some of our other work, it's not about just one of these objects because we've all seen one ball before. In here, it's about taking this one object and instead of one or two or 10 or 100 of these, there's a million of them. And so it's at the scale that you see here. And inspiration can come from anywhere. Um, we're looking at things when we're traveling, when we're going to a museum. We're thinking about spaces that were public spaces that encourage this kind of collective gathering, creating shared experience, um, and places you go to have fun in the summer. We took all those things and we we're thinking about the beach and what would happen if we brought that indoors and what would happen if instead of water we used these balls. I think it's easy to have a really good idea. It's much harder to bring that idea into the world and share it with other people. Um, that's one of the hard things about art, hard things about architecture is making it. Um, so there's kind of two parts to a project like this. We think about the design side, um, which is the ideas and uh, the documentation, and then the real like the building side, the construction side. Um, on the design side, which is what we do in our studio, we start with just discussing an idea. We're sitting around a table talking about the project, um, and we'll always start with a lot of ideas, and we'll start to refine them to decide which ones are better or combine certain ones to make things better. Um, and really, the beginning is actually just a paper and a pencil. Um, we're just sketching, <laughs> drawing, and then the next piece of equipment that we use is a computer. We do a lot of our projects using drafting program or doing like architectural drawings. We use 3D modeling software, so we'll be able to build a digital model of this project in the computer and be able to move around it and to edit things and to move things. And then we use those drawings and those models to tell the contractor, to tell the producer how to build it. If you want to be an artist, if you want to be a designer, if you want to be an architect, um, you have to create. You have to be thinking and you have to be making. When I was younger, and even sometimes now, I experience it, you get a little bit caught up in your ideas and you try to think too hard about something. And there's a lot to be said for just trying it, for just making it and getting it in the world and seeing what you think about it and seeing what other people think about it. The Beach is a project that we've actually done three times. And one of the things that we wanted to try here, we rotated the orientation of the shoreline so it goes in the other direction. And I think that it makes it feel a little bit more like a real beach, like the idea of walking along the shore. And it allows the people to sort of spread out and use the project in different ways. So if you're interested in making things and creating things, you're going to fail, you're going to have mistakes, but obviously it's about uh, learning from those things and uh, making things better. I'm personally happy for people to think whatever they want when they're here and to have whatever experience they want. It seems like people have fun when they're here.
I hope that art and architecture in 100 years are in a place at least as good as it is now. Um, I think we're constantly seeing um, the arts being threatened from a, at least from a funding standpoint, but I think there's always going to be creative people, there's always going to be people who want to make and inspire, um, and so I'm not worried about it, but yeah, I think we'll be in a good place.